Hi, I'm Dr. Dave Clayton, and today I'm going to tell you why after years of using pink Himalayan salt, I am throwing this bottle away in favor of one of these gourmet salts. I'm going to tell you why I'm making the change and why I think you should consider making a change too. So thanks for watching and let's dig right in. First of all, let's talk about where does pink Himalayan salt come from? Well, it comes from these huge salt mines in the foothills of the Himalayas, most of which in Pakistan, where they're pulling over 300,000 tons of salt out of these mines each year. And the sheer amount of that salt is why pink Himalayan salt is probably the gourmet salt that you're most used to seeing on the shelves. Here we've got a picture of one of the major mines in Pakistan, which is also an incredible tourist attraction from what I've heard. And this is where a lot of that pink Himalayan salt is coming from. But in addition to it being a tasty gourmet way to season a food and something a little bit cooler than just having iodized table salt, a lot of us are interested in the health benefits of getting all of the minerals that are coming from these salts. So let's take a look at how pink Himalayan salt stacks up against table salt when it comes to nutritive minerals that we want to get in our diet. Well, if we look here on a milligram per kilogram basis, Pink Himalayan salt has got a ton of minerals relative to your average table salt. I mean, it's clearly the big winner here. But then let's take a look and say, okay, we're not going to have a kilogram of salt, right? I mean, that's crazy. The upper limit of what is considered to be, you know, the right amount of salt in our diet is about five grams of sodium chloride or 2,300 milligrams of sodium. So if we take that as being a typical daily intake, and we compare the amount of minerals that are in five grams of salt and compare that to the USRDA of these minerals, the numbers don't look so impressive now because what we see is we're getting a fraction of the recommended daily allowance from a day's worth of pink Himalayan salt. And remember that not all of your salt is coming from pink Himalayan salt. You're gonna get salt that's already in the cheese or the bread or the rolls or the pastries. You're going to get salt that's in condiments and sauces. You're going to get restaurant food or packaged goods or chips that have sodium in it. So most of the studies show that about 5 to 10% of the salt in your diet comes from what you use on your salt shaker. So if we think about it in those terms, then really what we see is that compared to the recommended daily allowance of these nutritive trace minerals, it's really negligible. We're not getting anything impressive enough to really move the needle. So when we're using that salt shaker, yes, we are getting trace minerals, and yes, it's more than what we would get from table salt, but it's only the tiniest sliver of a fraction of what we need to get in a day. Now, getting small amounts of minerals you know, that's okay. We can accept the fact that, you know, even if I'm getting a little bit more minerals than from a table salt, then that's good. You know, I'll take that rather than nothing, right? But what we also see is that it's very variable. And I guess this makes sense too, because we're pulling salt from deep beneath the earth in these huge mines. And, you know, maybe one area has more boron and the other has less. And when we look at this study of 31 different salts, what we see is that the levels of minerals are highly variable. Some brands have no minerals of this particular, of each particular type, and some have a lot. And there's a huge variation here. I mean, you're talking about orders of magnitude of 10, 1,000, 10,000 times the difference from one salt to another. So I think when we think about getting the amount of minerals that we want from salt, we have to just keep in mind that it's gonna be small and it's gonna be variable. So because I want something that has a good flavor and has some minerals in it, I'm okay with the fact that the salt may be varied in the amount of mineral content and that maybe it's just not that much relative to what I might have thought I was getting originally. But then we got to start thinking about, are we putting ourselves at risk of toxins? 
And the good news here is that while the studies are varied in how much toxins are in various salts, generally speaking, it's so small that it's probably not making a difference in your health. In this study of 31 different pink salts, what we saw was that only one had higher levels of lead than are generally considered to be safe. So the safe limit is considered to be two milligrams per kilogram of salt, and only one of the 31 brands had levels that were that high. Now remember, you're not getting a whole kilogram, right? You're just putting a little bit of salt on your steak or on your uh, other food. So, you know, you're really only getting tiny, tiny amounts of lead or any other toxin, even when you're using, you know, a salt that crosses that threshold. And looking at a number of other studies, what we see here is that various studies that have looked at salts from the Middle East, from Italy, from uh, Australia, what we see is that the amount of toxin that they find when they do their study is highly variable. And in fact, what you see here is there were two studies done a few years apart, pulling salts off of Italian markets. And one of them found that all of the salts were safe. The other found that all of the salts had toxic levels of heavy metals. So I think what we can take away from all this is that while your trace minerals that are nutritive are highly variable, so are the amount of toxins. And in both cases, they're probably so small that it doesn't really move the needle on your health. Now that begs the question of if I can't count on these salts, for my trace minerals, where am I gonna get them then? I mean, I need trace minerals, right? Well, the good news is, is you don't really need to worry too much about it as long as you're getting a balanced diet. If I look at this slide right here, what I'm showing you is that a serving of eggs, a serving of peanuts, of almonds, um, of meat, vegetables, berries, legumes, if I look at those servings, what we see is that each of them has, in most cases, way more trace minerals than your average amount of salt. And what we're looking at here is if you got 10% of your salt intake from Himalayan salt or another gourmet salt, how much of the trace minerals would you get relative to a serving of each of these foods? And as you can see, real food trumps salt any day of the week. And if you're getting a balanced, all natural, healthy diet, you probably don't need to worry about trace minerals. What you're getting from the Himalayan salt or any other gourmet salt is a luxury. It's just the icing on the cake with the cake being your healthy, balanced diet. So with that said, which salt am I going with now that I'm tossing away my pink Himalayan salt? And for this, I'm gonna show you this data which comes from one study pulling gourmet salts from around the world off of shelves of an Italian market. Now, as we can see from the global map here, we're pulling salts from everywhere. We're getting them from France. We're getting them from the Himalayas, from the US, from Hawaii. So we're looking at a real global distribution of different types of salts with different properties. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at them side by side in terms of their nutritive content. So now let's look at the trace mineral content in each of these salts against each other, and then we can make a decision which one is gonna be the best one for us. Now, the pink Himalayan salt, kind of middle of the road here. It's got good levels of trace minerals similar to the others. And as you can see, most of them stack up kind of the same. So. What's the difference here is let's look just for fun because we know this is trace amounts, it's small numbers, but just for fun, let's look at if we have specific goals in mind, which one should we pick? And manganese and zinc are both pretty important when it comes to immunity and anti-inflammatory properties. So for that, we wanna look at a Persian blue, the Guarande has uh, high levels of manganese. Um, we've also got the Atlantic gray and the Mosia, as well as the Persian blue, all have high levels of manganese and zinc. So if we're an athlete, if we're working out hard, if we wanna make sure that we keep our immune system and keep our inflammation levels low, those are good ones to think about. And if we're worried about 
general mineral content, like for example, if we're dealing with osteoporosis or we want to maintain our bone density, then Persia Blue is hands down the one we want to go with. It's got off the charts levels of calcium and other minerals that are going to make a huge difference when it comes to supporting good bone health. So I'm not suggesting that any of these salts is going to make or break you. As I pointed out before, I would just as soon limit my sodium intake. I think there's a lot of dangers in having too much salt in the diet, but if I am going to use salt, which I will from time to time, I'm going to get one that's got a good story behind it and really provides me with the extra elements of these trace minerals that I want to support myself. So in this case, I'm going to go with my choice, which is Persia blue comes from salt mines in the mountains of Iran. I've got a picture here of where this salt comes from, and it's got a rich source of trace minerals that I know kind of puts it at the top of the charts, at least based on this data. So with that said, I'm going to leave you some links for where you can get some gourmet salt. Some of these were hard to find, so I found a good shop in uh, Greenwich Village, New York, that'll ship anywhere. That's where I got all these from. And uh, also leave some links for the research so that you can take a look and leave a comment. Tell me what you think and tell me which salt you're going to go with based on this data. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.